Good morning. Welcome to our 10 o'clock worship service here at Grace United Methodist Church in Gaithersburg, Maryland. To all who are joining us online and to all who have gathered here, welcome and happy new year to you. We give thanks that we can celebrate this new year together. For our celebration today, we will be offering the sacrament of Holy Communion. So to all of our friends online, we invite you to have some bread and grape juice handy as we'll be partaking later in the service. And to all who have gathered here and to all joining us, we practice in the United Methodist Church what is known as open communion, open table. All are invited, all are welcome to receive the sacrament this day. I can think of no better way to begin the new year than through receiving of the sacrament, celebrating God's presence. For our celebration here today, we are celebrating Epiphany. The day of Epiphany is the 12th day of Christmas. You thought that was just an annoying Christmas song, didn't you? No, there are, there are actually some strong theological meaning if you unpack that song some, but our Christmas celebration continues. So the Epiphany, the actual day, would be January the 6th. So this is celebrated this day. The coming of the Magi, celebrating the fact that God guided them through the star, through the light. We recognize that Christ is our light, and so as our Caroline was played by Betsy earlier. It just reminds me that folks in the community are hearing these joyful sounds, that we are celebrating the fact that God is present, that God will guide us. Just as God guided the Magi, we give thanks that God guides us. So we begin a new season in the life of the church, the season of Epiphany, which means appearance. God's light to guide us each and every day. This we celebrate. So as we begin a new year of worshiping and serving together, let's take some time to center ourselves as Betsy plays for us our morning prelude, the first Noel. Please join me in the call to worship. The Magi waited and watched, knowing something wondrous would be happening. We waited for the birth. 
birth of Jesus, how something wondrous is about to take root. The darkness that invaded all lives was banished by the light of that star. The darkness that surrounds us is gone. Let us celebrate the bright shining of God's love in our lives. Let us become those who will bring the light of God's love to others. Let's pray together. Everlasting, Everlasting God, God, the radiance of faithful, faithful souls, you brought the nations to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. Fill the world with your glory and show yourself to all the nations through him who is the true light and the bright and morning star, even Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able for our opening hymn, We Three Kings. It's number 254 in our hymnals. Oh. 
be seated. At this time, I invite you to join me in our Epiphany prayer. Bright star, holy one, hear our prayer. Bright star, holy one, be with those who suffer, struggle, cry out, weep, are in pain of heart or soul or mind. From the darkness, may the glory of God arise. Bright star, holy one, fill the hearts of leaders, nations, cities, and faith communities with wisdom and grace. May the glory of God arise. Bright star, holy one, lead our leaders in your way, your hope, your love, and your peace. Enlighten the pathways with the glory of God arise. Bright star, Holy One, laugh with those who laugh this day. Lift up our joys, our hope is found in you. May the glory of God arise. Bright Star, Holy One, help us in all we do and say, and are to be your love shining forth. May the glory of God arise. Bright Star, Holy One, hear our prayer. Amen. This time I'd like to say a special word to all of our children who are joining us for today's service. So glad that you are here. so much. That saves you helping me up. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, to everyone, I hope you had a special Christmas and had a special time with family and friends. It goes by so fast, doesn't it? I know last time we gathered, we were fretting that we weren't ready. And I figure a few more days I'll be ready. What am I sure? <laughs> what I find is ready or not, Christmas becomes a special time, so I, I hope and pray that you had a special time in gathering with loved ones and relaxing and enjoying what the day is truly about and celebrating our, our Savior's birth. Now, uh, for many of your schedules, it means uh, school starting back tomorrow, and uh, you'll be having those, those conversations, and somebody will be asking you, well, what did you get for Christmas? And you will share the gifts that you got, and that will lead to some fun conversations, and if you were here today, we'd be having a lot of that, that same conversation, but Lauren, as we think about those gifts, we're reminded of, well, how did that become part of our Christmas celebration? As best we can tell, it really does go back to the, to the Magi, to the, the wise men who come seeking the Christ child, and as we'll hear in the scripture lesson, they bring gifts, gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Now, did any of you receive gold, frankincense, and myrrh this Christmas? Nope. No, those aren't on the common gifts, are they? There, no. Took some gold and money for them to purchase those gifts, but no, we probably didn't. But if we go deeper, we find, as you'll even hear some reference to them in our first reading of Scripture when we read from Isaiah today, talks about uh, leaders bringing these gifts, gold, that, that belonged to those who were royal, to the kings and the queens of that time. But that gift has deeper meaning as we think of Jesus being the king in our lives, inviting him to rule, to be in charge. Frankincense, just a, it was a gift that was given to recognize deity, to recognize God's presence. So again, the deeper meaning of that being Jesus was not just a great person, but we recognize that Jesus is God as well as human. So we find that deeper meaning in these gifts. Isaiah won't mention myrrh, but it's, that is used to symbolize death. And we think about Jesus giving his life, giving his all, that we may have new life. So behind the gifts, we often find deeper meaning. I brought a gift that I, I received, as you can tell here, a, 
a coffee cup here, and if any of you know me, you know I, I enjoy my, my coffee, uh, not just in the day, but, uh, but throughout the day. So that was a, a very, a very appropriate gift. But if I turn that around, and you, you'll have to look at it afterwards to get a closer look, my sister gave me this gift, and they always have deeper meaning. What it is, is it's a picture of us as children. There we are, there my, I'm the last one in that picture there, and so we have the um, four of my siblings, uh, three I got to be with, and my youngest brother uh, in heaven, but just reminded of that magical time it talks about, that Christmas morning coming down the stairs to all the discoveries of that day. So even this mug had a deeper meaning to it. When we think about epiphany, we think about the deeper meaning. The word simply means appearance. We use it this Sunday because it talks about the star that would guide the magi, the wise men, to finding Jesus. The deeper meaning to that is that we have epiphanies today. That is, God is there to guide us. So whatever you're trying to find your way through, maybe it is in new challenges at school or at home or uh, processing what's happening in our world, we are given the assurance that God is always there to guide us. A star in the sky? No, we have something even better. We have Jesus in our hearts, and through the power of the Holy Spirit, we are given the strength to face whatever challenges, known or unknown. And through God being present means God's light shines through us. So, Lauren, you are helping with light already being our acolyte today, but there is a light, and as you see the candles in your home, may they have that deeper meaning to you that Jesus is the light of the world. Shining through us, we can help others find their way as well. There is deeper meaning in this life if we take time to discover these epiphanies that God is with us. This gives us strength. Thank you for being here. Amen. Our first reading from Scripture this morning comes from the book of Isaiah, the 60th chapter, the first nine verses. I invite you to hear these words. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the people's. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephra, and all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. And now I invite all who are able to please stand as I share our gospel lesson. A reading from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, the second chapter. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel." Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. 
Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Now we'll have a special music offered by Debbie Henning and Betsy Moore. What child is this?
Thank you, Debbie. Thank you, Betsy, so much. Amazing. Thank you. Please join me in a time of prayer. What child is this? Lord, we thank you for the heartfelt message we just received in song. That question is one to keep before us all year long. Too beautiful to leave to one season in the life of the church. Each day, O oh God, help us to revisit that question, who are you to us? Help us to grow in that answer, that reply, that you are our King. May we remind ourselves and may we remind and inform others that you are the source of strength and of life and of comfort. We ask, O oh God, that your same Holy Spirit that worked through this message, work through this reflection and prepare us to receive your holy sacrament as we pray this all in the name of Christ. Amen. A day of epiphanies. How important it is that we visit this account of the visit of the Magi. Magi, wise men, kings, however you want to refer to them, however many there were, they play an important role in the Christmas story. The story would not be complete without them. And I think of the joyous news of God coming to earth. The story is not complete without you because it's an invitation that is extended to each and every one of us. That's what the Magi represent that's so important. Here are Gentiles now coming to worship the newborn king. A message that's not just for a chosen few. Well, God started that way, going all the way back in the Old Testament. We see God working, but leading to this point where the good news is for everyone. This is what motivated the Magi in the bringing of their gifts. Now, granted, they were a little late to the story. Some scholars uh, project they probably came when Jesus was about two years of age. You get a little bit of hint of this when the scripture tells us there they found the child at the house in that time. We put the story all together. But recognize that even in their perhaps arriving late, we can identify. I'll speak for myself. Some of us have been late when it comes to responding to God's call in our lives. God calls everyone, whether you're called to ordained ministry or to the ministry of the laity, which means people, we are all called to ministry. If you feel God is calling you to ordained ministry, I encourage you to talk with Deacon Helen or myself. We are all called to serve, and that calling is ever unfolding. I find myself, it's hard to believe it'll be my 34th year in pastoral ministry, yet that calling continues to evolve and will throughout my life, I pray, until we are welcomed home. May that calling continue to evolve in each of our lives. I have the honor to lead our district committee on ordained ministry where we interview candidates and they tell their call story. And time after time, I have heard the story shared how it really began to happen and form in my life when I stopped running from God. Perhaps that's where you find yourself. God has been calling you to a ministry, to a task, to a ministry of the church or in your community, but we've, we've been running away, not intentionally using those words, but busying ourselves with other tasks, with other, quote, priorities in our lives. Now, I don't know if that was the case for the Magi or not. Whatever it was, they were astrologers and they loved to interpret dreams, but here they were following the star, seeking the Christ child. I pray this will be a year of seeking for each and every one of us to seek with purpose, 
to be guided by God's hand. Imagine how transforming it would be to our community and to our very church if we are to search with purpose and be directed by God's hand. That's what the Magi showed us. Going and even into Herod's court of all places in Jerusalem, say, uh, where can we find this one born king of the Jews? That sure got Herod's attention, didn't it? He, he called in his experts, called in his scribes and priests, and they gave that decisive clue, went back into the scriptures and found that it was, it was to be in Bethlehem. They were able to continue their journey. I promise you, and we are reminded of it in this sacrament, God will give us whatever we need to continue the journey in answering God's call. For the Magi, it's a story that goes even deeper than non-Jews coming to Bethlehem. It ends up being something even more powerful. Jewish disciples now going out to all nations. What was discovered in their quest, in their journey, in their answering to God's call was it was too good of news, too glorious of news to keep to themselves. It's a message to be shared with all nations, and we need to hear that today as the church. We are called to practice evangelism. We are called to share the good news, to be a witness of our faith to a world that is so hungry, a world that is so searching for hope. We find hope in the experience of the Magi all these hundreds and hundreds of years later. Who might experience hope and encouragement because of your witness? Because you are allowing the light of Christ to shine in your life and joining in ministries that God is calling you to be part of. Brian Stoffergen put it this way in talking about witnessing in an article entitled, There Are No Words. He wrote, while I believe that the gospel is always a proclamation about God's actions, effective witnessing involves a lot of listening. For a proclamation to be good news for someone, it has to address their needs, their questions, their concerns. I've often quoted this statement from a course on witnessing. You don't throw a drowning person a sandwich no matter how good that sandwich might be. We meet people in their need. Somewhere in the journey, we end up being ministered to ourselves. We are not complete without the other. You see joy. You see passion. It just jumps off the page as the Magi come searching. And when they are guided again by the star, by God's hand that guided them by a star, by a text, and later a dream, there is joy when they are able to kneel before the Christ child and present their gifts. The joy that is ours in this journey. I find joy in just looking at this journey of the Magi. Again, we, we don't know a whole lot about them. We know there were three gifts. We don't know if there were actually three. Maybe there were 12. That's another significant number We appears in the Bible. Betty, back in the 600s, uh, shared this about the Magi. He gave them names, and sometimes this carries down through tradition. Now, this is tradition. This is not in the Scriptures, but the names he gave them, Malchai, or was described as an old man with white hair and long beard, Gaspar, a young and beardless man with a ruddy complexion. Bothsar, as a black-skinned and heavily bearded man. I, I thought of those names we were visiting with my mom in Ohio this past week, and she had her nativity set out there. I, this nativity set goes, goes back years. I, re, I remember it from my, my childhood. But then I, I got to looking at, at the magi that were part of it. And sure enough, you see the black-skinned. You see the young. You see the older. One has more female characteristic than male. You just see this wonderful diversity that I think the magi do, in fact, represent. All of us are invited into this relationship. They play an important role. But notice, and she has it correct, the Magi are, are off to the side there. Who is at the center? It is Christ Jesus. 
Mary and Joseph right there, Mary, and often in your nativity scenes, and if you look around at them, often as, as a gown of red symbolizing life's blood, new life that is ours. An outer garment of blue symbolizing the, the blueness of the sky, this wonderful connection that, that is brought to earth in the Christ child, the connection between heaven and earth. And what I love about her nativity scene, and the, I notice in several, is the Christ child has his arms raised out. And I'm here to tell you, being a grandparent the last couple of years, nothing melts my heart quicker than when my little granddaughter reaches her arms out to me and wants to be lifted up. I can only imagine how it must warm God's heart when we reach out, when we ask God for help, for strength, to be a guiding hand. And that image of God reaching out to us in the Christ child takes me to this very sacrament that we are about to receive. For in this sacrament, God is doing just that, reaching out to us. What light, what hope this conveys to us as we begin a new year. A different path that God is calling us to. After they presented their gifts, the, the Magi are warned in a dream to go a different path, to go a different way. Perhaps God is calling you to that this day. That's the promise, is that God's light will in fact guide us. I love this season. It seems like the last couple of years, maybe it's because of COVID being with us the last two Christmases now, there's a lot more light displays in the neighborhood where I live. And to me, it's just a pick-me-up, an otherwise dreary month it would be, just to see the, the light displays. What's happened in the last few years, I haven't been so encouraged by, though. You see, in the neighborhood where I live, they started having, a few years ago, a contest. That is, there was a cash prize for the best light display. Now, maybe it's sour grapes on my part, okay? I, I didn't win, or nor did my neighbor I thought should win, didn't, didn't either. But, but I think it's something deeper than that, though. Just the, the idea that, in fact, they do it for Halloween, too. And I remember the person posting that one for Halloween, how they were going to take that $100 prize and use it to buy more decorations for next year. I just don't like the trajectory of that. Just, just more, just more. But I was encouraged when I picked up the paper, our local paper, a couple weeks ago. And on the front page, it had a picture of a family in, in Adamstown. Maybe you saw it where they put out a light display, but differently. You see, they put out a little collection box. Their daughter now, who's about age 12, a couple of years ago, was being treated at St. Jude's Hospital. And I, I can't say enough good about St. Jude's and, and their care and their, and their ministry. And so they put out the light display and they put the collection box and the funds raised, and now it's well into the thousands, all go to St. Jude's. What, what a deeper meaning. What, what purpose that, that brings, that, that adds to it versus winning a prize or claim of some sort. When I think of Epiphany, God's appearance, God coming to us, God reaching out to us, to me this gives life new purpose. Sometimes you may struggle with that thought. What, a, what is my purpose in this life? Why, why, why does God have me here? Sometimes we don't know and may not know the way God has used us, where your card, your call, your words, your action, whatever ways you have allowed God's light to shine through you, I promise you, is making a difference. The Magi following that light, and yes, the light, the joy of meeting the Christ shining through them, touches our lives all these years later. God is using your life. God brings a deeper purpose to each and every one of us. And as we receive this sacrament, we are opening our lives. We, in fact, are stretching our hands out to the one who is reaching out to us. This article by Kathleen Norris, I love the title of it. That's what got my attention. It's, it's entitled, Keep Herod in Christmas. 
I told you that would get your attention. You know, you, you hear often that keep Christ in Christmas or Jesus is the reason for the season. So when I, when I saw this, I thought, let's keep Herod in Christmas. That caused me to read it. But knowing her work, I, I was blessed by it and offered as we close. In her book, Amazing Grace, a Vocabulary of Faith, contemporary Christian author Kathleen Norris, she contrasts the fear of Herod with the faith of Mary and Joseph. Norris tells of preaching on Herod on Epiphany Sunday in a small country church in a poor area of the Hawaiian island of Oahu. It was an area of the island that tourists were warned to stay away from, an area where those who served the tourist industry as maids and tour bus drivers could afford to live. The church had had much to fear. Alcoholism, drug addiction, rising property costs and crime, the residents came to church for hope. Norris pointed out that the sages who traveled so far to find Jesus were drawn to him as a sign of hope. This church, Norris told her congregation, is a sign of hope for the community. Its programs, its thrift store, have become important community centers, signs of hope. The church represented, said Norris, a lessening of fear's shadowy power an increase in the available light. She continued to say that that's what Christ coming celebrates, his light shed abroad into our lives. She ended her sermon by encouraging the congregation, like the ancient wise men, not to return to Herod, but to find another way. She encouraged them to leave Herod in his palace, surrounded by flatterers, all alone with his fear. Let's leave the Herods alone in this life. Whatever it is that you are struggling with, with addiction, violence in the home, the crime we see in our communities, not sticking our head in the sand, I don't mean that, but let's find in Christ the other way where we as the church continue and increase in the ways we can be a sign of hope, allowing the light of Christ Jesus to shine through us. That's evangelism. That's not browbeating. That's not walking up to strangers asking, are you saved? That's allowing Christ to guide you in caring, in listening, and encouraging those around you and growing in our own relationship as well. And so I give you these challenges as we prepare to come to the table. First, are there epiphanies today? Well, think about that. Think about the times the light of Christ appeared before you. By what light do you see God? In nature? In community? In relationship? Inwardly? Second, how is evangelism being practiced today? Pray about what you will model. How can we help light the way to Christ? And lastly, where are the places God's light is needed to shine in our community? Where are the places God's light is needed to shine in our community. Pray for opportunity to shine God's light in these places. Lord, we pray that as we receive this sacrament, your light in us, shine through us each one, we pray. Amen. To prepare ourselves to receive the sacrament, we go into this time of confession. The coming of Christ was not and is not widely welcomed. Wherever there is epiphany, there will also be darkness. The darkness of old superstitions and dogmas which refuse to fade away easily. The darkness of pride and the half-truths that have masqueraded as wisdom the darkness of entrenched evil that hates the light and tries to dispose of it, the darkness of apathy that cannot be bothered to open the shutters, let us make our confession together. Most, most holy, holy and, and most, most loving, loving God, God, 
we admit to you and to each other that we are creatures who either through foolishness or willfulness often choose darkness instead of light. Here and now we surrender to you our fears and proud opinions, our short-sighted folly and our pompous wisdom, our deep-seated sins and our apathy towards change and renewal. Please forgive the darkness and pain we have inflicted on others and restore the light, starved hopes and ideals within our own souls. Trusting your grace, we earnestly pray, create in us a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. Through Christ Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Hear these words. My friends, Epiphany is good news. The light comes not to sear and blind us, but to save us. Christ Jesus came into this world to save sinners. In his name I declare to you, your sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Take up your forgiveness with thanksgiving and live without shame or anxiety. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ enables us. Amen. Please join me now in the words of our great thanksgiving, and we will sing our responses. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth before the mountains were brought forth, or you had formed the earth from everlasting to everlasting, you alone are God. You created light out of darkness and brought forth life on the earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, in whom you have revealed yourself our light and our salvation. You sent a star to guide wise men to where the Christ was born, and in your signs and witnesses in every age and through all the world, you have led your people from far places to his light. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice. In union with Christ offering for us, as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out 
your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. As children of God, we are bold to pray. Our Father, Our Father who, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as, as we, we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against, against us. And lead us not into temptation, temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the and glory, glory forever. forever. Amen. Amen. The body of Christ broken for us, the blood of Christ shed for us. The feast is ready. Oh, we've been doing feasting these last few days, but this feast is different. This meal brings us the necessity, brings us purpose, and brings us opportunity to shed and to shine his light, shedding our sins, that we are born anew. All are invited to receive. Again, we will bring the sacrament to you. The elements are all gluten-free. Those of you at home, we invite you to partake of the elements at this time.
in worship and in daily living, we are provided the opportunity to give back to God. I firmly believe it was out of gratitude that the Magi presented their gifts, giving back as we recognize God has given us a gift in Christ Jesus that none of us could ever earn or deserve. And so with our morning offerings, the financial gifts we give online or in person here, we too are giving back with gratitude in our hearts. And each time we give, we are allowing God's light to shine through our offerings. May God's light continue to shine through the gifts given this day. It's out of gratitude we lift all of these to God in thanks. Amen. At this time, Deacon Helen will lead us in our morning prayer. Will you pray with me? God, in Christ, you have come to us as one of us in love for us, and we praise you as you continue to reveal, to renew, to restore your good creation. Please help us to recognize you, to welcome you, and to follow you. In this season, we have come looking for you and have found that you are right here, right now, right beside us. But as the seasons change and the decorations are stored away, we invite you to strengthen us and to hold us to account, to save us from the danger of lukewarm faith. Thank you for reminding us that you have come into the world to lead us and all of your creation to life, not only for a season, but for eternity. Good Shepherd, help us to pray by our words and our deeds for all people who need a home, for their safe shelter, and also for a place to belong, to be loved, to love others. King Jesus, help us to respond with our hearts and our minds, our hands and our feet to the unequal access to food, vaccines, wealth, and other basic resources within our communities and around the world. Bright and morning star, shine your healing and revealing light upon the natural environment in need and neglect. Upon people around the globe who are facing severe flooding, drought, and wildfires. Upon every nation as we continue to struggle against this pandemic. Upon your church and upon every beating heart. We pray for all who are ill and all who care for others, for those who travel and for those who work to make travel possible for all of the people and communities who serve you by putting the good news of your love into action and for ourselves as we seek to do this too. Lord, we give you thanks for the gifts of our hearts, our bodies, our minds, and our spirits as we commit them to you and to the work of your kingdom. Please renew us for the journey ahead. In your holy name we pray, amen. Now I invite you to stand as you are able for our closing hymn. There's a song in the air, number 249 in our hymnals.
there's a star in the sky, there's a mother's deep prayer, and a baby's low cry, and the star rings its fire while the beautiful sing, for the manger of Bethlehem cradles our King. There's a tumult of joy for the wonderful birth, for the virgin's sweet boy is the Lord of the earth. By the star rays its fire while the beautiful sing for the manger of Bethlehem cradles our King. In the light of that star lie the ages in pearl, and that song from afar has swept over the world. Every hearth is aflame, and the beautiful sing in the homes of the nations that Jesus is King. We rejoice in the light and we echo the song that comes down through the night from the heavenly throne. May we shout to the lovely evangel they bring and we greet in his cradle Savior and King. Please be seated. This week is going to be a very busy time, literally in this space. Uh, this week, the uh, old screen is going away and new screens are going up and it's probably going to be a little messy as we work through this and preparing for next Sunday, but we'll get there. But I am so grateful for the faithful giving the faithful giving that enables our ministries and enables our house of worship to be maintained, but that legacy giving that has enabled these next steps in ministry that we can be virtual, that we can gather in person. I am grateful for how God is at work. And we as Christians have work to do. When my son was very young, it was a rainy Sunday morning, like a Sunday after Christmas. I remember I must have said it out loud, oh, it's going to be a low Sunday attendance-wise. And he said, Daddy, everybody goes to church. I said, no, they don't. And I thought of it as just a child uh, being na naive. But he had it right. God's call is to everyone. God is working and is seeking to work through your life and mine that all may come to know the joy, the warmth of having Christ in their hearts and his light shining through them. And what a transformation that will have. I want to go back to the challenges that we gave you for this week that once again I want to invite you to think about and to pray about and most importantly apply to your living and they are three. Are there epiphanies? I'll answer it for you. Yes. There have been epiphanies this day. God is at work. Think about the times the light of Christ appeared before you. By what light do you see God? Is it in nature, community, in relationship? inwardly in your devotion? How is evangelism being practiced today? Pray about what will you model? How can we help light the way? And lastly, where are the places God's light is needed to shine in our community? Pray for those opportunities to shine God's light in these places. And now hear these words of sending forth. Go now as a light to the nations. Honor the Lord, preach what you know of the risen Christ, and fulfill all righteousness. And may God strengthen you and bless you with peace. May Christ Jesus bring forth justice for you and among you. And may the Holy Spirit alight on you and affirm you as God beloved ones. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.